I'm really excited to be introducing our new preach theme for this month. And at the beginning of this year, we had our Vision Sunday and we had our focus for the year. And one of the things that we said that we want to focus on is being far reaching. And the way in which we're going to be looking at that this month is that we're going to be looking at some of the different mission fields in our lives, some of the different areas of our lives where we can be far reaching. And today I specifically want to be focusing on our workplaces and looking at how we can share our faith in the context of our workplace. But for those of you that might not know me too well, I work in a sales-based role, so my day-to-day -day can look very different. I'm sometimes out visiting companies and going out and visiting existing customers. I could be working out of our office, but then I could also be working remotely from home as well. So each and every day can look very different for me. And I'm sure your working environments also could look very differently. For some of you, it might be that you are in employment and that you travel into an office or a factory every day. Obviously, with COVID, that might be looking a little bit different at the moment. Uh, but you could be listening today and you are a business owner and you're actually responsible for employees and the running of your business. It might be that you are in some sort of education or you're in some sort of training and the way that you spend your week and the way in which you work is learning and going to lectures and all of the fun things that, uh, that come with education. But you might also be a stay at home parent and the way in which you work, the, the way in which you spend your time in the week, it is looking after and it's raising a young child. It could be that actually you're in retirement and your time is completely your own. And the way in which you work, it could be that you spend time down at your allotment. It could be that you uh, you actually volunteer with your time. Or it could just be that you're, you're just practicing on that golf swing uh, down at the golf course. But however you work, whatever your week looks like, it is important to God. God cares about the way in which we spend our time, but he also cares about the way in which we interact with those around us as well. And ultimately today, I am going to be talking about evangelism. And evangelism is just a biblical word for simply sharing your faith. It's about telling people about what amazing things God has done in your life. And you might be listening to this today and thinking, you know what, this is actually something that I struggle with. This is something that doesn't come naturally to me. It's something that puts me out of my comfort zone a little bit. But I want to say that's OK, because today I want to talk about and my aim for today, by the end of today, is that you go away with tools to effectively share your faith but also to be sent out in the power and the boldness of the power of the Holy Spirit as well. So no matter how you're feeling at the moment, put that to one side and my prayer today is to just allow God to speak to you and allow God to equip and empower you today. And as I said, our focus and our vision for the year, one of the things that we're looking at was about being broad and about standing out. And when I envisage something being broad, I quite often think of a tree. And sometimes you get those really skinny trees that are just upright and there's, there's not a lot to them. But then you also get those really broad trees where their branches spread out and they're really far reaching. And the vision that we have as a church of, of trees along a riverbank that Paul uh, quite often had, has sort of me mentioned and referenced. You know, I envisage those trees being broad and being far reaching. But alongside this point, we also have a Bible passage as well. And I want to read this out to you. And it's out of the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. And Jesus is talking here and he says this to us. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. 
Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. As Christians, we have been given a light by Jesus. When you come to faith, when you give your life to Jesus, we go from spiritually living in darkness to then being brought into the light and our lives being illuminated. And when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about a physical light that's radiating from your face. I'm talking about a spiritual light that is in our lives. However, we do see in the Old Testament, there is somebody who, after spending time with God, literally the glory and the light of God radiates from his face. But today, for the context of this, I'm talking about the spiritual light that is in our lives. And as a result of this light in our lives, our lives should look different to the people around us. Our lives should look different to those who don't have God and don't have Jesus in their lives. And this Bible passage, it tells us that we should let this light shine before others, but it also says that we should do that so people see our good deeds and ultimately glorify God. And when I think about this, when I think about good deeds, I think about the way in which we live our lives. And we know that through having Holy Spirit in our lives, we should produce the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. And to give you an example of some of those things, that as a result of having Holy Spirit, the power of God in your life, you should produce love. As a result, you should be producing joy out of your life and that actually you should have peace in your life for having Holy Spirit, having that light in your lives and also the way in which we act, that we should also do, um, we should do works of kindness, we should be doing acts of kindness as well, it should flow out of our lives, it should be who we are. And as a result, our deeds and our actions, they should stand out uh, from those that don't have God in their lives. And as I said, the way in which we live our lives and the way in which we work, it is really important to God because the way in which we work, which is what we're talking about today, ultimately it can be a witness. So let me explain that a little bit more. If you're always doing a bad job, if you're always calling in sick when you're not actually unwell and it's just because you want a day off, when you're not given 100%, it can, it can reflect on our character. And ultimately, it can also be a reflection on our faith as well. So the way in which we act is important and, and that can go to the, the other extreme as well. So when we talk about evangelism, when we're talking about sharing our faith in our workplaces, is if all we ever do is talk about our faith, is if all we ever do is try and convert people and we just ram it down people's throats, people will get sick of us and they'll actually stop listening to us. So with all of this, there is a balance. And today I want to talk about that and look at what it looks like to effectively evangelise. And as I said, evangelism, it's simply telling people what God has done in your life, the good, amazing things that God has done. And I've entitled this message today, Commissioned for the Mission. And I've taken that title from Matthew 28, and that there is entitled The Great Commission. And we're going to read it out in a moment. But before we do, I just want to give you a definition of what that word commission means. So commission means an instruction, a command or a role given to a person or group. And as I said, I want to read out a summary of the Great Commission now, and it's out of the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15 to 19. And it says this in the Passion Translation. I absolutely love it. It says, And he said to them, As you go into all the world, preach openly the wonderful news of the gospel to the entire human race. Whoever believes the good news and is baptised will be saved. And whoever does not believe the good news will be condemned. And these 
Miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They will drive out demons in the power of my name. They will speak in tongues. They will be supernaturally protected from snakes and from drinking anything poisonous. Wow. And they will lay hands on the sick and heal them. After saying these things, Jesus was lifted up into heaven and sat down at the place of the honour at the right hand of God. What an amazing account there. What we see is that Jesus is commissioning. Jesus is commissioning us and he is sending us out. And this commission, it was given specifically to the disciples, but it is also given to every single person who chooses to follow Jesus and every single person who chooses Jesus as their saviour. And the exciting thing about this is we become part of God's redemptive plan. And I want to talk more about that as we go on today. But before we do, I just want to highlight a few things out of this passage. And it's interesting here. It says, as you go. And to me, that suggests that you're not, we're not going to stay where we are right now. But actually, we are being sent out. And while we are sent out into our lives, we are to do something. We are supposed to do these works. So do these things as you go to work. Do these things as you go to the office. Do these things as you go to the factory. Do these things as you go to the shops. Do these things as you do the school run, as you drop your kids off at nursery. Do these things as you go to school, as you go to college, as you go to university. As you go, preach openly. And this passage in another translation, in the ESV translation, rather than using the word preach, it uses a slightly different word. It uses the word proclaim. And that word proclaim, it means to announce publicly. All very simple. Now, when we look at the root word and we look at it in the Greek, it uses a word caruso. And that's spelled K-E-R-U-S-S-O. And that word Caruso can actually be translated in more than one way. It can be translated as the word proclaim, which we read in the ESV translation. But the word Caruso, it can also mean to herald. And I'm going to explain what that means to herald, because it's something that it's not an everyday word for us. But Jesus' command here, it, it can be similar to the job of a herald and a herald was someone who quite often would shout out news and they would public publicly announce things that needed to be heard so for say for example in the roman empire let's say in another part of the world they won a battle well that news would then get spread out through the kingdom and that would happen through heralds that was their job they were uh, people who would publicly announce news And these heralds, they were originally messengers who would have been sent by monarchs, uh, monarchs, 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 uh, but also noblemen as well. And they were sent to convey messages and proclamations. And in this sort of sense, they were predecessors to what we have today of a modern diplomat. And I believe that Jesus is sending us out as heralds. He's sending us out as messengers to convey this message of good news that we carry. And you are sent as a diplomat into your workplace and you are being sent as a representative of Jesus. And I've actually got a picture here that I want to share with you. And this is of a herald. And What you can see from this picture is that the herald is wearing something called a surcoat. And I had to do a little bit of research into what a surcoat was. But it was a it was a loose robe that would be worn over armour. And this surcoat, it would be decorated with the coat of arms of their master. So as you can see on the banner, uh, there's the the coat of arms, but also the colours are symbolic as well because they would represent their master. 
And as I mentioned earlier on, the vision and one of the focuses that we have for the year is to be broad. But the second part of that is to stand out as well. And as you can see with this Herald here, they would have stood out with those brightly coloured clothes over their armour. They would have been hard to miss. And I'm sorry, but this is where my mind went. But when I saw this Herald in red and white, it just reminded me of Where's Wally. And if you've never, if you've never had a Where's Wally book before, you have to go and Google it, but you'd have a book of a really busy environment. And what you had to try and do was find Wally and he would quite often be wearing red and white. And in the same way, we are called to stand out. We have been clothed in light by Jesus because he is light itself. And when we go out into our workplaces, we are taking the light of God and that power within us. And that power it is so powerful. It is something that stands out. It's nothing of ourselves, but it is God in us that stands out. So I want to look specifically at what it looks like to allow God's light to shine out through our lives. And in Acts Chapter one, verse eight, and again, a summary of something that Jesus said. He said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Come on, you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness telling people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, through Judea, in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That is to Stoke-on-Trent. That is to your workplace. That is to where you go. And the question that I want to ask you is, do you believe that you have received power? Do you believe that you have received this light from God that radiates from your life? Because the light and power we have in our lives, it is the salvation we've received from God. It's the promise of eternal life. It's the forgiveness of our sins. It's the fact that we've been filled with power to heal the sick. We've been given the authority to cast out demons. We have the authority to call those things out in people people's lives that is not doing them good, to break down those barriers that are keeping people from God. We are called to do these things and you have been given the authority to see heaven come to earth. So how do we do this? How do we evangelise effectively? Simply, the first thing that we can do is that it starts with prayer. It's simple, but it is so, so crucial. It is an important part of evangelism and it is an important part of sharing our faith. And we see when Jesus talks about uh, evangelism in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, he talks about there being a harvest, that there are loads, lots of people out there who are ready to receive salvation. And Jesus tells us that we should pray for the workers, pray for people who can bring that harvest in. But one of the things that I do, and this is something that I do on a daily basis, is that I will pray the Lord's Prayer and I will use that prayer as a structure. And in that prayer, we are taught to pray, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What we're praying is, God, would you let heaven and all the great things about heaven come to earth? But in the Lord's Prayer, we're also taught to pray, give us this day our daily bread, where we ask God for the things that we need. And in the same way as praying for the things that we need on a daily basis, I also believe that we should be praying for God's kingdom to come in our lives and also in our workplaces. That we should be praying when we go out, when we are being far reaching, when we're going into those different places and those different environments, that we would be taking the kingdom of God with us. And we also see in, in the book of Daniel, it says in Daniel 6.10 that he prayed three times a day. So just as you, if you're anything like me, you'll eat at least three times a day. You've got breakfast, you've got lunch and you've got tea or dinner. And in the same way, we should pray regularly throughout the day as well. 
And a number of years ago, I was in a job that I wasn't particularly enjoying. I was working in a factory, it wasn't the best of environments, and I was really struggling with that job and I didn't want to be there. And I was feeling a little bit sorry for myself, if I'm being completely honest. And I remember talking to Sarah about this and she actually gave me a kick up the backside and it was exactly what I needed and it did me really good. But what she said was, Rob, try and bring God into your everyday try and bring God into your workplace. And at that time, one of the things that I actually started doing was on my lunch break, I would intentionally spend some time praying. And I also did a daily devotion as well. And I want to recommend a great devotional book and it's called The Daily Office and it's by Peter Scazzaro. And it's about intentionally stopping in your day to intentionally be in the presence of God, to practice being in his presence. And that practice has stuck with me. And all of these years later, it's still something that I do. When I have my lunch, I will quite often sit there and eat my lunch and I will pray. And I'll, I'll pray to God about my day. I'll pray to him about particular opportunities and deals that I'm working on. But then I'll also pray for my colleagues as well and pray, God, would you come into my workplace? Would you come into this environment? And I want to give us some really helpful pointers of how to evangelise. And I want to read something out from Colossians 4, verse 2 to 6. And in here, there are six elements of what it looks like to have responsible evangelism. And I've actually taken this uh, from a blog uh, and it's called The Evangelist's Rulebook and it was written by the Jesus Film Project. But let me read this scripture out. It says, devote yourselves to prayer being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, and that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way that you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone. And as I said, there are six elements that I want to pull out of this. And the first one in verse two, we see that it tells us that we should pray regularly, which we talked about already, but it says to pray for opportunities to share the gospel. And if you are serious about sharing the good news, if you're serious about sharing your faith, you have to devote yourself in prayer. You have to ask God to give you those divine opportunities, these God-given moments to share your faith. The second element in verse two, it goes on to say to be watching and thankful. So since we're going to be praying for opportunities, we are then going to be watching, we're going to be looking out for those opportunities. And when we have those opportunities, we can then be thankful. We can thank God for those opportunities to share. The third element in verse three, it says pray for opportunities for others to share the gospel clearly. And this is about praying ultimately for for the rest of us in the church, praying that we would all have those opportunities and that we would be going out in power and in authority. And as a church, we, we regularly on a monthly basis have our prayer events. And if that's not something that you regularly come along to, I want to encourage you to do that because that is a great place to start, to start praying for those that don't know Jesus. And we will quite often intentionally pray for our work environments and pray for our community and pray for the people around us. The fourth element in verse five, it says, be wise about how you treat outsiders. And this is ultimately, it, it's being aware of people around us. It's being aware of the conversations that we have. And it's not that every conversation we're trying to share our faith, but it's just having an awareness of what we are saying. It's not doing anything to undermine our integrity. And quite often, Quite often when I'm at work, there'll be times where people might be gossiping or they might even be putting people down. And it, it can be really tempting to go along and join in with that conversation. But what Paul's saying here is being be wise about how you act with the people around you. The fifth element, make the most of every opportunity. So when the opportunities come along, make the most of them. It requires us being bold and stepping out. And sometimes... It's putting ourselves in a vulnerable place where we're opening up and sharing with people. 
And the sixth element is to ensure that your conversations are full of grace. It's important that when we have our conversations that they reflect the heart of Jesus. With everything that we say, we, we are having the culture of heaven in the way, the way in which we talk to people, that we're not, we are communicate in, in a way that first of all people can understand the language that they use, uh, but they're full of grace as well. And in 2 Timothy verse 4, 5, we see there that Paul tells us to work at telling others the good news. So what Paul's saying there is it might not come naturally, that actually it's something we have to work at. It's something that we have to practice at. And now I want to encourage you after today to think about what has God done in your life? What is your testimony? What, what are the things that you can share about what God has done in your life? God has positioned you in your workplace. It's not a coincidence you are where you are. And quite often we can put pressure on ourselves to share our faith. We can be like, oh, I've got to do it. You know, I need to lead people to Jesus, which we do. But ultimately, it is down to God. We can't force our beliefs on anyone. It's through the power of the Holy Spirit that people have that conviction in their heart, that the scales can fall from their eyes and they can have their eyes open to the goodness of God. And we, we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from 6 to 9, it, it says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. And we all have a part to play in this. You know, for some of you, it might be that you, you are planting seeds, you're having those initial conversations with people. But then it could also be that you're in the privileged position that you get to lead someone to Christ, that they've heard the gospel more than once. And actually, they're in a place now where they're saying, actually, I want to respond to this. But wherever it is, ultimately, it is God that causes those seeds to grow. So practically, just a few things that you can do to be far reaching and to evangelise in your workplace. You know, you, first of all, build genuine relationships with people. Get to know people, genuinely get to know how they're doing. Get to know what their lives look like. And quite often, as I mentioned, because I work out of the office, I'll call up or I might just spend the, the odd day here or there in the office. And I will intentionally, when I call up, I'll ask people, you know, how are you doing? How is your day? I try and be genuine and build uh, those relationships with people. Be open about your life. You know, when you're talking about the weekend and you're talking about the things that you've done, share the fact that you went to church. Share the fact that you, you are a Christian and some of the things that potentially we were talking about on the day. And when people do share, don't be afraid to offer to pray for people, to pray for God to come into that situation, for God potentially to come and do a healing in that situation. I've actually had the opportunity to pray with a couple of work colleagues. One at the end of a meeting, we were in a conference room, we were talking. I just said, look, can I pray for you? Can I pray for God to heal you? And nothing happened in that moment, but I'm believing that seeds were planted. And... We have so many things as a church that you can invite people along to. We're in a really unique position at the moment with doing church online that you can send a video to someone. You can share a link. You can put it on your Facebook wall and you can invite people along to church in probably the easiest way ever in the whole of the history of mankind. You can share so many things online. We have some great courses, you know, invite people along to things like Alpha and offer to do it with them. We're doing it online, we're doing it on Zoom. COVID has not stopped those things from happening. And also we have things like our Easter service coming on. We have quite often our Christmas carol services and things like that where you can invite people along. But ultimately, evangelism, it is a heart issue. And it is God's heart that none would perish. And in the same way, we need to allow God to do something in our hearts, to soften our hearts and bring us to a place where we want to share our faith with people. We want to share the good things that God has done in our lives. And it's about a willingness to be sent. And in Isaiah 6, 8, God asks this question to Isaiah. He says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah says, here I am, send me. 
And I want to give you an opportunity today to respond to this message, to allow God to work in your life, to allow him to soften your heart and to allow him to fill him with your power, to fill him, to fill you with his light and to send you out in his boldness and power. So what I want you to do is is to practically respond today. And wherever you are, if you're sitting down, if you're at home, wherever it is, I just want you to place a hand on your heart. And if you want to stand, you can stand. If you want to kneel, kneel. If you want to just stay where you are, that's fine. But what I want to do, I want us to pray. And I want us to ask Holy Spirit to come and to potentially fill you for the first time, but also to come and just bring refreshing in our lives, to fill us afresh today with that power and that light. So Holy Spirit, I just want to pray for every single person who's watching today. And as we've talked about being sent out, about being far reaching, about standing out, I ask Holy Spirit right now today, would you come and would you just fill every single person afresh? Would we have a fresh filling of your power today? Would you give us that fresh sense of boldness that as we are sent out this week, we know that we are being sent out in your authority, that we are being sent out in your power. So Holy Spirit, we ask and we pray right now, would you come and would you just fill us anew with power today? In Jesus' name, amen.